Jocelyn Memorial Library Storytime. Week of April 27th, 2020. Grow, grow, grow! Hello, it's me, Anna. I'm back for another story time. I'm glad that you're here. I'm actually right in the middle of taking the compost out. We just had breakfast and so the compost bucket got kind of full. We have some old strawberry tops, some eggshells, some old coffee grounds, some raspberries that were kind of moldy, some orange peel, all kinds of stuff. What do you think? Does it look delicious and good to eat? Mmm, no. <laughs> Not for me, but actually for plants, this is like gold. It is really good stuff. I can't wait to feed it to my compost pile. I'm actually right here. This is a compost pile, but it's some finished compost. Believe it or not, this pile of this beautiful looking dirt started off as this. And now it's this. Worms and ants and all sorts of little things in the garden break down all of those bits and pieces of food and turn it into something that's actually food for plants. There's some compost over there that's almost finished. It needs a little bit more time to turn into something that's super healthy for the garden. But I'm not putting these food scraps into this compost pile or that compost pile. I have another one that I'll go and show you. Here we go. So here's my compost pile where I add fresh scraps that came right from the kitchen. I also add some straw, or some leaves, something that's kind of dry in there. Time to add some more. I'm just gonna add some dry material. That'll help it so it doesn't get too stinky in there because compost can be very stinky. All right, I'm gonna close it up again. <laughs> what? Hey guys, how's it going? Library bear, library cat. Oh, it's so good to see you. How have you been? Are you guys just hanging out here by the compost? It's a little stinky. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Um, hey, do you know what? I don't have time right now because I have to get ready for story time and gather some books and things. Um, but uh, would you be able to check on the fairy house right now? Because I haven't checked on it for a little while. Can you go do that for me? Oh, awesome. Okay, sounds good. Bye guys, thank you. Library Bear and Library Cat headed off to check on the fairy house. When they got there, they noticed the flower decorations were looking a little wilted, so the two friends decided to tidy them up. When they were done gathering them, Library Cat left to take the old blossoms to the compost. While Library Bear was waiting for his friend to return, he had an idea. What if we planted a garden for the fairies so the flowers wouldn't wilt so quickly? That's a wonderful idea, said Library Cat. They headed off to prepare a garden bed. They raked off the leaves and put down little rocks to make a path. And then they were ready to plant the garden. Library Cat dug some holes and they set to work planting bulbs. I think the fairies will be so excited to see the garden we've made, said Library Cat. Only it will be a long time before it grows. If I could make one wish, it would be that this garden was in bloom now so that the fairies could enjoy it. Hmm, said Library Bear. If I had one wish, it would be that we were fairies. Oh yeah, said Library Cat. We could fly around. We'd have so much fun. 
But as Library Bear and Library Cat were talking, they began to feel strangely sleepy. I suppose this is as good a spot as any to take a rest, said Library Bear as he nuzzled into the leaves. Yes, replied Library Cat. <sighs> it will just be a short nap. Of course, said Library Bear. What the puppets didn't know was that a fairy had been listening to their wishes and sprinkled fairy dust to make them fall asleep. And while they slept, magical things began to happen. After some time, Library Bear and Library Cat awoke. First, they noticed that the garden had transformed. <gasps> Our garden, it's in full bloom, remarked Library Cat. And look at your back. Look at my back, said Library Bear. Wings, we have wings. The friends decided they must have had a visit from fairies while they were sleeping. They celebrated their good fortune and tried out their new wings. It was pretty tricky. How about we go practice flying some more, Library Bear suggested. So off they flew. Hi everybody, welcome back. How was the fairy house? Did anything exciting happen while you were there? <gasps> what? No way! How? What? How? That, that's amazing. going on oh my gosh um well I guess we'll just sing our good morning song and I can't wait to find out more about that later all right here we go good morning dear earth good morning dear sun good morning dear rocks and the flowers everyone Good morning, dear animals and the birds in the trees. Good morning to you. Good morning to me. Good morning, everybody. Oh my goodness, we've already had a pretty exciting start to the day, but I am excited to get started doing a little bit of gardening today. It's about that time of year, and I wonder if you're doing any at your house. First, how about we sing another song? Should we sing zoom, zoom, zoom? Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna get down so that I'm ready to blast off. Here we go. <laughs> zoom, zoom, zoom. We're going to the moon. Zoom, zoom, zoom. We're going to the moon. If you want to take a trip, climb aboard my rocket ship. Zoom, zoom, zoom. We're going to the moon in five, four, three, two, one. Blast! Oh, yeah! One more time? Should we do it? Um, hmm. Let's try something different today. We've been doing it really fast, but maybe today, since Library Bear and Library Cat were being little fairies earlier, maybe we could do it in a tiny fairy voice. Do you think you can make your voice really tiny? And maybe you can even try to do zoom, zoom, zoom really tiny. I'm gonna try it with just my fingers. What do you think? Okay, I'm gonna get down really, really tiny. Here we go. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. If you want to take a trip, climb aboard my rocket ship. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. In five, four, three, two, one, blast off! <laughs> Did you do a teeny tiny blast off? That's kind of tricky, can you try it again? <laughs> gardening book. 
The book itself isn't actually that little, but the gardener that's in it is very, very tiny. It's called The Little Gardener by Emily Hughes. For my pappy, petunias still bloom for you, as do I, my fondest love. Thanks, Stephen and Theo. From Emily Hughes. This was the garden. It didn't look like much. There's a lot of different species of plants in there. Can you see the little gardener anywhere on this page? but it meant everything to its gardener. What else do you see on this page? Or on the opposite page? Do you see any other characters? I think we actually saw this character earlier today. It was his supper. Can you tell what he's eating? This kind of reminds me of a fairy house. Do you think that this little gardener is a kind of fairy or no? Is he just a little tiny gardener? I don't know. It was his joy. Only he wasn't much good at gardening. Hmm. It wasn't that he didn't work hard. Is that a flower? It says cola. Maybe some kind of soda. Hmm. Do you usually grow soda in your garden? He worked hard, very, very hard. He was just too little. Look at him pulling his hat down. But there was one thing that did blossom in his garden. It was a flower. It was alive and wonderful. It gave the gardener hope and it made him work even harder. He worked all morning. He worked all afternoon. <laughs> Look at that. He's not really cutting down a tree, but he has to use a saw just to cut down these little prickers. He's so tiny. He worked all night. Can you see his face? He's going like this. He's so tired. Still, the garden was dying. He would have no home. He would have no supper. He would have no joy. One night, feeling tired and sad, he made a wish. If you were the little gardener, what do you think you would wish?
in little tiny writing right here, it says, I wish I had a bit of help. No one heard his little voice, but someone saw his flower. It was alive and wonderful. It gave the someone hope. It made the someone want to work harder. I'm noticing too in this, on this plant, there's another little blossom that looks like it's about to bloom. Can you see the little gardener on this page? He's so tiny. Hey, bird. The next day, the gardener was weary and slept the whole day. He slept the whole week. He slept the whole month. What's happening while he's sleeping? I think things are changing in that garden. And when he finally awoke, it had been just long enough for something to change. Oh my goodness, can you see his face? He's going... This is the garden now, and this is its gardener. Wow, and look at all the things that he has to eat now. He's planting some seeds right now, but there's already been some, what look like wild strawberries growing. It looks like there's a giant carrot, or is it a regular sized carrot in this tiny little gardener's garden? Wow. He doesn't look like much, but he means everything to his garden. And I kind of want to compare this page where it looks so beautiful to the very beginning. Do you remember? Remember how that garden used to look? There's lots of shades of brown and green in there. There's a whole rainbow on this page. It's so beautiful. I'm feeling very inspired by this little gardener and all of his friends who helped him. I think it's time to go work on my garden. Will you come with me and do some gardening? I would love to show you where I grow my vegetables. Let's go. You wanna come, Suki? Hey, Bert. Welcome to my vegetable garden. <laughs> This is actually just one of a few different vegetable gardens. I have to grow my vegetables in kind of funny places because my house is really just built on a rock. And so this vegetable garden was made out of a stone wall that we filled with dirt. And now it's where I grow veggies. There's a lot of stuff happening in here right now, even though I haven't planted anything this year. There's so much that is actually already growing in the garden. I do have some things from last year that, that were growing in the garden. Like this was an old husk cherry plant. <laughs> and I'm gonna let Birdie play with that. <laughs> um, but there's other stuff that's, that's actually green already. There's some things that I planted last year, like some arugula and some spinach. It doesn't taste very good. I can't wait for some good, new, fresh spinach this year, though. I'm so excited. 
There's also a little plant. I, I only planted like one or two of them, but then they did something called self-seeding. And now they're everywhere. This little Johnny jump up plant. I just love these flowers and they're one of the first to bloom in the spring. So they make me so happy. They even kind of look like a little smiling face. There's another thing I'm noticing that's growing here and tons of them too, tree seedlings. I'm gonna have to pull these up as much as I love maple trees, which is what this is from. I don't want them in my vegetable garden. There's so many of them. They're pretty special too. Have you ever seen a maple seed? Maybe you've seen one falling from the sky. They have a really special way of falling. Some people call them helicopters and some people call them whirly gigs. This is what they look like before they sprout and turn into a little tree seedling. And actually there's something kind of magical that happens on the inside. Inside of this little seed right here, the leaves are all wrapped up in this little spiral. And I'm feeling so inspired by that shape. I kind of want to try to make it with my body and pretend to be a maple seed. Will you do that with me? Can you make this shape with your body? Right now I'm curled up into that same shape that a maple seed makes inside. Okay, I think I'm ready. I can feel the warm sun and I can feel a little bit of moisture. It makes me kind of want to stick a little root down into the soil to see. Oh, it feels like I'm on top of some nice grass. It's all wet. Oh, there we go. I just found some soil. I'm going to stick my foot in there. I mean, my root, not really my foot. Oh man, and it's a really warm day. I think that I can stretch out my leaves a little bit. Oh yeah. Oh, that feels so good after being cooped up in that shell for so long. Okay, here we go. Can you wave your arms as if they're the first leaves of that maple seed and they're saying hello to the sun for the first time? Hello, sun. Thanks for being a seed with me. So I'm gonna take a little break right now because story time is extra long today. And if you wanna take a break at home too, you can have someone help you pause the video. And right now during my break, I'm gonna go and look for some more maple tree seeds. And I wonder if you can find some too. And I'm also curious if you might be able to find some other kinds of seeds. I'm gonna go look for some right now. A good place to find them is in open fields. You might find some old flower stalks that still have some seeds on them. One place to look is at the base of trees. You might find some seeds there. In fact, there were a whole bunch of sprouted maple tree seeds at the base of the tree where we made our fairy house. Another place to look is in your garden if you have one. There's all kinds of places that you can look. I'm so curious to see what you might find. All right. So I just cleared off a little bit of this garden plot and I'm gonna put some compost on it so that it's ready to plant. I gathered some compost from that old compost pile where it was ready to go into the ground. And I'm gonna put it right on top. I'm also gonna work it in a little bit with this garden fork. Do you see how it kind of looks like a fork that you would eat with? But it's actually a fork for your garden because this would be way, this would be like a giant's fork. It's so big. I'm just gonna gently mix it in. All of this compost is gonna be food for the plants that I grow. This garden bed is looking so cozy. If I were a seed, I think that I would wanna be planted here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's plant some seeds. I'm gonna get out my seed box. This is where I save all of my seeds. I'm gonna plant this spot first, and I picked out some radishes to plant right here. These ones are some of my favorite kind of radishes. I like to eat them on a piece of bread with butter and salt. Mm. I can't wait. 
So I'm gonna make a little furrow, which is just like a little trench with the side of my hand. I'm just gonna press down. And then I'm gonna take some of these seeds and very carefully put just a few into the palm of one of my hands. And then I use my other hand with my pincer grip. That means this thumb and this forefinger are pinching together. I'm gonna use that grip to take little tiny bits of seed and just sprinkle them right down that little trench. Just like we were pretending earlier when we were maple seeds, these seeds are gonna start to grow soon. But for them to grow, first we, it's kinda like we're putting them to sleep. We're saying, hey little radishes, it's time to go to bed. And so we actually need to cover them in their little bed. But they don't have a blanket like you and me. They have more soil. So I'm gonna pinch it on top. Pinch, 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 pinch. And then I tuck them in by patting. Pat, 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 pat. But I need to remember exactly where these are so that I can remember where I need to water if it gets dry before they come up or where I should be really careful not to step. So I'm gonna make a little marker that says radishes. R-A-D-I-S-H-E-S, -E radishes. And now I know exactly where I planted my radish row. If it were a dry day, I would take my watering can and I would water, 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 water all along these seeds. But it's actually about to rain, so I'm gonna let Mother Nature do the watering. I just planted my garden, at least the start of it. Hopefully over the season, I'm gonna plant a lot more things. But right now I have radishes, arugula, and lettuce. It's gonna make a pretty good salad someday. I do have to wait a long time for it to grow though, but I can't wait. You know, after planting these seeds, I was thinking of that maple seed that we were pretending to be. And uh, as much as I love maple seeds, I'm starting to feel like I wanna to pretend to be a seed that I would plant in the garden. I'm thinking I'm gonna be a radish, but I hope you'll do it along with me and I hope that you'll decide whatever kind of vegetable you're gonna be. This looks like a pretty good spot to be a seed. I'm gonna plant myself here. First, I'm gonna to pretend to put a little bit of compost on this bed. And now that it's looking really cozy for a little seed like me, I'm gonna plant myself right here Oh, first I have to dig a little furrow. Maybe if you're watching this video with a grown-up, they could pretend to put some soil on top of you after you've turned into a little seed. Maybe they could even water you or pretend to be the sun shining down. Right now I'm gonna curl up into a tiny little seed. And I'm imagining that that water is starting to feel so good on my back. It's telling me it's time to grow. And I'm gonna put a little feeler out, a tiny little root. Oh, it's a good spot to grow. Oh yeah, this is some good loose soil. Can dig in a little bit. And I can start to open up my leaves and spread them to the sun. Maybe I can grow even more. I'm getting much, much taller. Oh man, Ooh, I'm starting to grow a little bit of a radish down underneath the soil. Maybe someday somebody will come and eat me, put me on a salad. So now that we're really feeling like seeds, I was thinking that we could read a book to learn more about seeds. This book is called A Seed is Sleepy. Let's go and read it. Hmm. 
here we go. A seed is sleepy. Did you feel kind of sleepy when you were pretending to be a seed? Apparently, seeds are sleepy, according to the title of this book. It's by Diana Hutz Aston and Sylvia Long. Ooh. Do you know what kind of seed this is? It looks like something that maybe in the summertime you pick and blow on. Do you ever blow dandelion seeds like that? Let's look and see if it's same, same. these seeds. Japanese maple. That's very similar to the sugar maple seeds that we were pretending to be earlier. Were you pretending to be any of these kind of seeds? Hmm. Date palm, hog plum. You might recognize that kind of seed. Do you know what that is? Sunflower. There's one kind of bean seed. Hmm. A seed is sleepy. It lies there tucked inside its flower on its cone or beneath the soil, snug and still. There's a sunflower. A seed is secretive. Do you think that seeds seem like they have a secret? It does not reveal itself too quickly. That's so true. I know that my seeds are gonna be waiting in the ground for a long time. A seed is fruitful. Blueberry. Strawberry. The seeds on a strawberry are easy to see. You can even pick them off if you want to look at them closer next time you're eating a strawberry. A seed is naked? I've never even seen a seed wear clothes. But I guess they're naked. Hmm. The little writing on this page, I haven't been reading all of it because this book has a lot of details that's really helpful if you ever want to check this book out from the library and look at it up close. But there's a lot of words in it, so I haven't been reading them yet. But on this page, I feel like I want to know more about why they're saying that a seed is naked. Scientists call gymnosperms, seeds that aren't clothed in fruits, naked seeds. Most naked seeds hide themselves on the scales of cones until they're ready to make a dash for the ground. So I guess these are naked seeds. Have you ever looked up at a pine cone closely and thought, put some clothes on you silly pine cone. Seeds come in many sizes. Wow. There's an orchid seed, the smallest of all. They can even have a million seeds in one pod. There's a giant seed, Coco de Mer. A seed is adventurous. It must strike out on its own in search of a less crowded place to put down roots. This is one of my favorite kind of seeds, milkweed. They use this soft floss to be able to fly in the wind. Have you ever opened up a milkweed pod and felt how soft it is on the inside? It's pretty magical.
Drift seeds float on ocean currents from one shore to another. They have enough air inside to help them float. And their thick protective shells keep out seawater. A seed is inventive. To find a spot to grow, a seed might leap from its pod or cling to a sh child's shoestring. Have you ever had something like that? Cling to your shoestrings? I know that I have. This right here is cockleburr, but I definitely have gotten some burdock on my shoestrings before. Or tumble through a bear's belly. A seed hopes to land where there is plenty of sunlight and water. A seed is generous. It gives the baby plant or embryo a seed coat to keep it warm. There's the seed coat. This picture is kind of as if someone cut a seed in half and we're looking at what's on the inside. Some seeds are ancient. Sometimes they can wait a really, really long time before sprouting. A seed is thirsty and hungry. Once a seed has shed its coat, it drinks in the rain, the dew, and yesterday's icicles. It feasts on minerals in the soil. Kind of like the minerals that we put into the garden using compost. A seed is clever. It knows to seek the sunlight, to push itself up, up, up through the soil, but it must wait a while before that happens. Can you see those little roots? that are going into the ground, eating up the minerals and nutrients. A seed is sleepy, but only until it has found a place in the sun and it has had its breakfast and a drink of water. Then a seed is a wonderful plant. Do you know what kind of flower this is? A sunflower. Do you remember on that first page what we were looking at? Just pictures of seeds. And then all of a sudden, on the back page, we're looking at pictures of plants now. There are some amazing plants out there that all grow from seeds. I have some seeds that I want to share with you in a second. But first I was thinking that we could sing a seed song. But to do this, you're going to need to get your hands ready. And you're going to need to pretend that your finger is a little seed. We're going to plant it right in the ground underneath some soil. You can use your other hand to be the soil. And we're gonna sing, seed in the ground, sit so still, will it grow? Will it? Yes, it will! If you wanna to pretend to be a seed that just like pops out of its coat all of a sudden, you can do that. Or you can be a slow growing seed, it's up to you. I think I'm gonna be a popping seed. Pow! Kind of like when we do zoom, zoom, zoom and we blast off. Here we go. Seed in the ground, sit so still. Will it grow? Yes, it will! One more time. Seed in the ground, sit so still. Will it grow? Yes, it will! 
I have some seeds that I want to show you that have not grown yet that are really beautiful. Do you remember earlier when I went on a hunt for some seeds? I looked on some old plant stalks. I looked on the ground near trees where I thought maybe some trees had dropped some seeds. So here's some of the things that I've found. Underneath a beech tree, I found this kind of seed. It's kind of shaped like a pyramid. Underneath a hemlock tree, I found this kind of seed. Do you remember when we were reading that seed book? This pine cone is naked. The seeds are right on the outside. And in the field, I found these. This one kind of looks like it might have some teeny tiny little seeds. Can you see them really up close? When I go like this with my hands and crunch it apart, there's some little seeds that come out. They almost look like a miniature version of this seed actually. And then I also found these in the field. These little hairs make it so that it can fly in the wind and then it can carry its seeds to another place. And I also found this in my driveway. It might be a rock, but I don't know, it kind of looks like a seed. And I also found a maple seed. Sometimes if you squish them, they open up and you can see that it's just the seed coat, but this one still has a little plant inside. I'm gonna try and plant these just like I planted my other vegetables, but this time I'm going to need to make some different kinds of signs. I don't necessarily know the names of all of these, and so I'm gonna draw a picture of each of them. Okay, I'm ready to plant my mystery seeds. I made some signs for each of them so that I will remember where I put them in the ground so that I can come back and check and see if they really are growing, if they really are seeds. I'm gonna push them into the soil and cover them in a little bed of soil. And then I'm gonna put a marker on so that I know where they are. The tiny seeds, I just want to put in a little ways. Here's this tiny little one that looked a little bit like a pyramid. I only want to cover it just barely. All my seeds are tucked into bed. Good night seeds. I gave them all my own names because I wasn't necessarily sure what they were actually called. If you find some mystery seeds, you could name your seeds too. I hope soon that they're going to wake up and sprout. I can't wait to see them again. And I hope I see you again soon too. I also hope that you'll send me some pictures of your garden or you outside maybe doing some hard work in your garden. All right, I'll see you soon. Bye.